In this video, I want to talk about latent state trait models. What are latent state trait models good for? First of all, latent state trait models were developed in the late 80s by Rolf Steyer as a response to the person situation debate in psychology, where psychologists were arguing about whether psychological constructs are more situation driven or more trait driven, meaning more driven by person effects or trait effects. And so at around that time, people were unsure about how to measure states and traits in latent variable models in, for example, measurement models of confirmatory factor analysis. So how should those be defined? How should we measure states and traits? And so Rolf Steyer came up with latent state trait theory, which explicitly defines latent state variables, latent trait variables, latent state residual variables, and measurement error variables as functions of observed variables, and more specifically as conditional expectations of observed variables. So he was the first to provide a clear psychometric definition of what a state latent variable is, what a trait latent variable is, what a state residual latent variable is. And so his theory can be understood as an extension of classical measurement theory or classical test theory, where we consider only person effects and measurement error, but no situation effects. So latent state trait theory um, entails classical test theory, so to say, as a special case when you're measuring something that is purely trait-like, for example, something like intelligence where situation effects are not so relevant, then the model, the latent state trait model, so to say, reduces to a classical test theory model where you only have a trait effect. So what does it look like? What could a prototypical latent state trait model look like? I'm going to show you that here. So here we have uh, repeated measures design, a longitudinal design with three observed variables or three items or three um, parcels or something like that, y1, y2, and y3. So those could be three different scales, for example, or three different items for measuring depression. And we measure them in this case here on four measurement occasions. Now, we don't have to have four measurement occasions. It's enough to have two. But of course, it's always better to have more data. So I'm assuming here we have a design with four measurement occasions and three repeatedly measured observed variables. You could, again, you could do this with just two measurement occasions, but having more is, of course, better. And so the idea in a latent state trait model is that the observed variables are a function of a trait variable xi. So that is the time invariant variable or the, the latent variable that stays stable across time, we could say. So that's to say the between person individual differences that are re, um, represented by this latent variable xi. You could also say that this is kind of like a random intercept factor. So is a factor that remains stable across time. And in um, this model, there are different loadings allowed for the different items because they could be measured on different scales. So those could be, for example, depression scales that differ in their metric. In addition, in the latent state trait model, we also have time-specific variables, and those time-specific variables are called latent state residuals, zeta. And so those variables reflect within-person variability. So those could be seen as um, situation representing situation effects and person by situation interactions, everything that's not reflected by the trait, but that is systematic variance that um, remains, so to say, residual variance in the items after partialing out the trait is represented by the zeta variables, those state residuals. The state residuals are uncorrelated with the trait factors, so they represent an independent source of variance. And so in summary, the trait factor represents stable between person differences or trait effects, whereas the state residuals zeta reflect um, situation and or person by situation interaction effects. Those are residual effects at a given situation or at a given time point. And we also have measurement error. So random measurement error in an item that um, reflects purely unsystematic sources of variability, unreliability, random measurement error. 
And we can also have extended latent state treat models where we have method factors to take into account that the items may not measure exactly the same trait component. Um, for example, a model with indicator specific traits could be used or a model that has a general trait factor like this one, but has additional method factors that account for those stable item specific or indicator specific effects. Now, given that this model here has independent factors or orthogonal factors, we could say, where the trait factor is not correlated with the zeta factors and the zeta factors or the trait factor not correlated with the measurement error variables, epsilon, we can break down the variance of the observed variance variables into trait variance, state residual variance, and measurement error variance. And based on that, we can form or we can define R squared type coefficients that reflect consistency or the proportion of variance in a measure that is trait variance, occasion specificity, which is the proportion of variance in a measure that reflects situation and or person by situation uh, effects and measurement error or unreliability. Now I'll show you that on the next slide, how that is calculated, how you can compute that based on the model parameters. Now, one more thing that I want to point out here is that this model is very similar to a bifactor model. So maybe you know bifactor models from cross-sectional analyses where you try to extract a general factor and specific factors. And so this is a very um, similar idea, a very similar structure where here the general factor is the trait and the specific factors represent the situation and person by situation interaction effects. And then in addition, you also have random measurement error in this model. So let's take a look at how you can extract those consistency, occasion, specificity and reliability coefficients from this measurement model. This is based on those parameters, the consistency coefficient looks at the trait variance component relative to total observed variance. And so that's the unstandardized trait loading square times the variance of the trait factor divided by the model implied observed variance. An easier way to calculate the consistency coefficient is by simply taking the standardized trait factor loading, which here I indicated as lambda IT standardized, and then square that loading. And that also gives you consistency Consistency. consistency is the proportion of variance in an observed variable that is due to trade effect. So for example, you might compute for your scale or for your measure, a consistency coefficient of 0.7, that would mean that 70% of the variance that your measure reflects is trade variance, which would point to a measure that is more trade like than state like. You can also calculate the so-called occasion specificity coefficient, which looks at the zeta variance component relative to total observed or measured variance. So that's the state residual factor loading delta squared times the variance of zeta divided by the model implied observed variance again, or taking the standardized loading on the state residual zeta and squaring that gives you the same thing. Occasion specificity um, gives you the proportion of observed variance that is due to situation or person situation interaction effects. For example, you might calculate an occasion specificity coefficient of 0.3. That would mean that 30% of the measured variance is due to situation or person by situation interaction effects rather than pure trade effects. So that allows you to determine whether a measure is more of a trade measure or more of a state measure. So for example, in validation research, we're often interested in finding out whether something really measures trade anxiety or whether it's more a measure of state anxiety. And so then those coefficients can help you validate your measure. If you want, for example, a measure of trade anxiety, you would want to maximize consistency and you would want to minimize occasion specificity. Or if you want a state measure of anxiety, then you would want to maximize occasion specificity and minimize consistency. And so those measures allow you to check on your test construction. Or maybe if, you have, if you're doing research in an area where you want to find out is a construct more like a state or is this more like a trait, then you could also use these coefficients to find out whether a construct is more trait-like or more state-like. In addition, you can also compute reliability. And in latent state trait theory, reliability is the sum of consistency for a given measure plus occasion specificity for that same measure. So 
It shows you that latent state trait theory is more inclusive in its definition of reliability than is, for example, classical test theory, where in classical test theory, we think of reliability as being consistency only. So we often do, for example, a test retest correlation as a reliability coefficient. And so that would then only take into account the stable portion of variance or the consistency, whereas in latent state trait theory, a measure could be very low in terms of its consistency or trait effects across time, and yet this measure could still be highly reliable. For example, if you have a measure of mood states or hormones, then you wouldn't expect that the consistency coefficient would be very high. However, the occasion specificity would be high, and so then that also contributes to reliability. Or in other words, a measure of something that is more state-like could also be reliable. And in latent state trait theory, this is included. Now, again, you can see here that this model uh, reduces to a um, classical test theory model when the state residual effects are zero. So when you have no variance in your state residual factors, then those drop from the model and then you have a single trait model, which is the same as, for example, a congeneric model of classical test theory. So in other words, um, classical test theory can be seen as a special case of latent state trait theory where you have no effects of situations or person situation interactions and that may be appropriate for constructs such as for example intelligence or other very stable personality constructs where situation effects do not um, matter. So I hope you found this presentation useful as an introduction to the idea of modeling states and traits with confirmatory factor analysis. If you're more interested in learning more about that, check out videos that are um, uh, linked in the description. And um, if you like uh, these tutorials on statistics, then feel free to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.